Hello everyone, I'm back. Since the 10th edition dropped, now we have all the rules and points values for the armies. So I think now it's the best time to check on how good and valuable the starter box is in the current edition. At first, I would like to start with one of the most popular ones, and one of the best ones in my opinion. Have you ever wondered about what it means to be one of the Dark Angels? It is to be the honored First Legion, the Emperor's Wrath, the Sons of the Lion! Repent, for tomorrow you die! Currently, we are looking at one of the best legions. They are not just epic space knights, but also they have a tragic backstory, and one of the best Primark, the Combat Patrol Dark Angels. It contains a Primary Chaplain, 5 Intercessors, a 3-man Inceptor Squad, and 1 Redemptor Dreadnought. Also, it contains a Dark Angels Upgrade Sprue, but not everyone is going to use that, although on that sprue you can find one really sick Power Sword for your Intercessors. Ok, but let's check on this set on the monetary side. It costs $160 or €125 Euros or £95. Pounds. Its monetary value is around €175 Euros if you are going to use the upgrade through. If not, it is around €163, Euros, which is still nice. I think this is a great saving. But for now, let's check out how good is this kit and how much value you are going to find in this one. First, let's check on our HQ option. Primary is Chaplain. One model for 65 points. The chaplains are usually a really fighty, spiritual leader type of model, like a warrior priest for example, but as far as the primary chaplain go, this unit is a leader, so you can attach him to a unit. But in case of this box set, you can attach him to the intercessor squad, so you can provide them some buffs. We will talk about the buffs later, but first, let's check on this model. Offensive capabilities. He has an Absolvor Bolt Pistol, which is a pistol with a range of 18, one shot, hitting on a 3+, plus, with a strength of 5, 1 point of armor penetration and damage 2. This is a good pistol, mostly good against Space Marines, Chaos Space Marines or Orcs, but it is good against almost any and every infantry. This weapon has the pistol rule, so you can shoot it even if you are in melee, which is the place where the chaplain likes to be. Other than that, he has a melee weapon, Corrosius Arcanum. He has 5 attacks with this weapon, hitting on a 2+, plus, with a strength of 6, 1 point of armor penetration and damage 2. This weapon is ideal against characters, infantry units or even bikers. It has a good strength, the armor penetration is a little bit low, but the damage is great. Other than that, things that you have to know. This model is not fast. It has the same speed as an average infantry. It has a toughness 4, he has 4 wounds, which is okay I guess, for a somewhat supportive character. The armor save of 3+, plus, which is nice, but the great test thing, he has a leadership of 5+. Plus. So when you attach him to a unit, that unit is rarely, if ever, gets battle shocked. Ok, and let's check on his supportive abilities. Litany of Hate. While this model is leading a unit, each time when a model from that unit makes a melee attack, you can add one to your wound rolls. Because just imagine, even if one of the intercessors just have a pencil, then he can still wound a Warlord Titan on a 5+, plus with that pencil. So that's nice. His other ability, Spiritual Leader. Which means, once in a battle, you can select one friendly Adeptus Astartes unit, which is battle shocked, and if they are within 12 inches to this model, that unit is no longer battle shocked. So you get a free pass on your battle shock test. And the greatest thing, because it happens at the start of any phase, if one of your crucial units gets battle shocked, you can still select them at the start of your command phase to pass the battle shock test, so you can score your objectives. So this can go a long way. Other than that, one more really important thing, the primary chaplain has a 4 plus invulnerable save, which is amazing. That's it about this guy. Let's go to the next unit. Intercessor squad. 5 model for 95 points. These guys are your basic troops. So they are reliable and do their job, but not very interesting. But let's check out what they can do. You have 5 guys in the squad. Each guy has 2 wounds, a toughness 4 and a 3 plus armor save. Everyone is equipped with a bolt rifle, close combat weapon and a bolt pistol. The bolt pistol is a pistol with a range of 12, one shot, hitting on a 3 plus, with a strength of 4, 0 points of armor penetration and damage 1. While the bolt rifle is a rifle which has the assault and the heavy keyword. So, if you didn't move, you add plus 1 to your hit rolls, thanks to the heavy. But if you moved and you advanced, you can still shoot, thanks to your assault keyword. This weapon has a range of 24. It has 2 shots, hitting on a 3 plus, with a strength of 4, 1 points of armor penetration and damage 1. This weapon is ideal to deal with infantry units. Other than that, for every 5 models, you are able to add an Astartes grenade launcher, which is a weapon with 2 profiles. Before you shoot, 
you have to choose one. One of them is Frag and the other one is Crack. The Frag is a Blast, which is best used against Hordes. The Blast keyword means for every 5 models in that unit, you can add one to the number of attacks that you make with this weapon. This weapon also has a range of 24. It has D3 attacks, plus one for each 5 models in the enemy unit, so it can be a lot. This weapon is hitting on a 3+, plus, with a strength of 4, 0 points of armor penetration and damage 1. While your other option is the crack grenade, which has a range of 24. It has only one shot and hitting on a 3+, plus, but it has a strength 9, 2 points of armor penetration and damage d3. So this one is ideal to kill elites or to chip off a few wounds from vehicles. This weapon is free, so take it every time that you can. You can replace the sergeant's bolt rifle with an Astartes chainsword or a power weapon or a hand flamer or with a plasma pistol. But if you listen to me, do not replace the sergeant's main weapon. Instead, you can replace the sergeant's close combat weapon with a much better melee weapon. First of all, let's check on the close combat weapon. Every model in this unit has a close combat weapon, which is basically a knife. It has 3 attacks per model, hitting on a 3+, plus with a strength of 4, 0 points of armor penetration and damage 1. Ok, so you can replace this weapon with a much better weapon as I said. Let's check on the other weapons. Astartes Chainsword. This weapon has 5 attacks, the most number of attacks any melee weapons from this unit, hitting on a 3+, plus with a strength of 4, 1 points of armor penetration and damage 1. This one is great, a lot of attacks and it even has an armor penetration. Your other options. Power weapon. This weapon has 4 attacks, so it's still a nice number of attacks. Hitting on a 3+, plus with a strength of 5, 2 points of armor penetration and damage 1. This is good, because the strength of 5 is allowing you to damage average infantry units much easier and that 2 points of armor penetration can come in handy against more armored units. So this one is also nice. We have two other options. One of them is Power Fist. This one has 3 attacks, hitting on a 3+, plus with a strength of 8, 2 points of armor penetration and damage 2. The strength of 8 is really nice, because this is around the threshold where you can deal easily with Space Marines, Chaos Space Marines or even light vehicles. And let's check on our last option, Thunder Hammer. This weapon has 3 attacks, but it's only hitting on a 4+, plus, with a strength of 8, 2 points of armor penetration and damage 2. But this one has an ability called Devastating Wounds. Whenever you roll Wound Roll, and that Wound Roll is a 6, you deal 2 mortal wounds instead of the damage 2 attack. This one is good, because your opponent can't make a saving throw, unless he has some kind of a feel no pain ability. But all in all, I think this one is worse than the Power Fist. If I would have to choose, probably, I would choose between the Power Fist, the Power Weapon or the Astratus Chainsword. Ok, and let's check on their ability. Objective Secured. If you control an objective marker at the end of your command phase, if you control an objective marker at the end of your command phase and this unit is within range of that objective marker, then that objective marker remains under your control, even if you you have no models within range of that objective. You only lose control if your opponent controls it at the start or the end of any phase. So call it sticky objective. This one is nice and very useful. Because as space marines, sometimes you don't have enough models or units to stand on every objective that you have. So one or two five main unit of intercessor squad is really great to have. At least one unit of these guys can be a really great help. Ok, and let's check on the third unit, Inceptor squad. Three models for 115 points. Personally, I really like this unit. These guys are part of my top 5 space marine units. But let's check out what they can do. First of all, these guys are tanky and fast. They are much tankier than your average space marines. Because they have a toughness of 6 and they have 3 wounds each. And on fast, what I mean. Well, they can move 10 inches and they are also flying. So much easier to scale high obstacles. They also have the ability deep strike. So you can put them into reserve and they can come in later turns, probably in the second or the third turn, anywhere on the board. But they have to be more than 9 inches away from your enemy units. Unless you use their special ability, called Meteoric Descent. You can use this ability when you're setting them up with the Deep Strike ability. If you use this ability, you can put them anywhere on the board, but it has to be more than 3 inches horizontally away from the enemy units. But if you use this method, then they can't make a charge move in this turn. But the good thing is, with this move you can really easily take away objectives from your opponent. Let's check on their weapons. First of all, they have two types of weapon options that you can choose. First one, Assault Bolters. 
If you choose the Assault Boltas, then you get a weapon that is Assault, so you can shoot it even after advancing. It is Pistol, so you can use it even if you are in melee. It has a Sustain hit too, which means when you roll the hit roll, and you roll a hit roll of 6, you get 2 additional hits. That's nice. And the Assault Boltas are also twin linked, so you are able to reroll the wound rolls. It can come in handy to wound your targets much much easier. This weapon has a range of 18. It has 3 shots, hitting on a 3+, plus, with a strength of 5, 1 points of armor penetration and damage 2. This one is a really great and safe anti-infantry weapon. Your other option is the plasma exterminators. However, when you use this weapon, before you make your shots, you have to choose a profile. It has two profiles. First one, standard. If you use this one, then this weapon counts as assault, pistol and twin linked. So you can shoot it even after advancing, you can shoot it in melee and you can roll your wound rolls. If you use this one, then the weapon has a range of 18. It has 2 shots hitting on a 3+, plus, with a strength of 7, 2 points of armor penetration and damage 2. Less shots, better strength and armor penetration. Or you can supercharge this weapon. But if you do this, then this weapon is Assault, Pistol, Twinning and Hazardous. So after you shoot, you have to make a Hazardous check, which means you roll a d6 and if you roll a 1, then this model is destroyed. So each time when you use this profile, you have around 16% or a little bit more chance to kill yourself, which is risky, but you get a lot if you supercharge your weapon. In supercharged state, it has a range of 18, it has 2 shots, hitting on a 3+, plus, with the strength of 8, 3 points of armor penetration, and damage 3. And this one is really spicy, especially with the twin link. With this one you can cause some serious damage to the heavies, tanks, monsters or things like that. And last but not least, this unit have close combat weapons. For every model, you have 3 attacks, hitting on a 3 plus with the strength of 4, 0 points of armor penetration and damage 1. It's not really great, but after the shooting, if your target has 1 or 2 wounds, you can go in and finish. But melee is not the happy place for these guys. And let's check on the last one, the big one, the Redemptor Dreadnought. One model for 225 points. This guy is amazing. The things that you have to know, it has really great survivability. This one is tough, has a lot of wounds, really tanky, has amazing weapons. And all in all, one of the best units to have. I only have two of this guy, but I think I need a third one. That's how great it is. Let's check on what makes it great. This unit has an okay speed. The movement of 8. His toughness is a 10, which is starting to be on the good side. It has an armor save of 2+, plus, which is really nice. The wound characteristic of this model is 12, which doesn't seem a lot, but with his other ability, it can go on a long way. First, let's check out his weapon options, and after that, its abilities. Let's check out the big gun. You have two options, Heavy Onslaught Gatling Cannon or Macro Plasma Incinerator. The Heavy Onslaught Gatling Cannon first. This weapon has the ability of devastating wounds. So when you roll a wound roll of 6, you cause the number of mortal wounds that the damage of this weapon. So your opponent doesn't have to make a saving throw. This weapon has a range of 24. It has 12 shots, hitting on a 3+, plus, with the strength of 6, 0 points of armor penetration and damage 1. Or you have the other option. Macro Plasma Incinerator. Since this weapon is plasma, it has two profiles. One of them is the standard, the other one is the supercharged one. Let's check on the standard first. This weapon is blast. So for every five enemy models, you can add one to the number of attacks that this weapon makes. The Macro Plasma Incinerator has a range of 36. It has a D6 plus one attack, plus the number of attacks that comes from the blast. Hitting on a three plus, with the strength of eight, 3 points of armor penetration and damage 2. So this one is really good against anything. The other option, Macro Plasma Incinerator, Supercharged Mode. If you use this one, then the weapon is still blast, but it also has the Hazardous ability. However, because he is a vehicle, if you roll the one on your Hazardous check, this model not dies instantly, but takes 3 damage, which is a much better deal in my opinion. In the Supercharged Mode, this weapon also has D6 plus 1 shot plus the extra shots from the blast ability. Hitting on a 3+, plus, with the strength of 9, 4 points of armor penetration and damage 3. In this mode, the bane of smaller vehicles, bikers or even elites. Okay, other than this, you have an Icarus rocket pod. This weapon is anti-fly too. So if you are shooting at a flying target, you wound it on a 2+, plus in every case, regardless of your weapon strength and the target's toughness. 
so it's nice to have. The rocket spot range is 24. It has D3 shots, hitting on a 3 plus with the strength of 8, 1 points of armor penetration and damage 2. It's an okay weapon on its own. Okay, okay and the Redemptor Dreadnought has weapons integrated to its hull. You can choose between two. The first one, Twin Frackstorm Grenade Launcher. This weapon has a range of 18. It has D6 attacks, hitting on a 3 plus with the strength of 4, 0 points of armor penetration and damage 1. This weapon has the ability of Blast and Twin Linked. I think this weapon is good, especially if you want to bring this unit into melee or at least closer to your enemies. But there is no significant difference between this one or your other option, which is the Twin Stormbolter. This weapon has a rapid fire too, so if you are within half range, you can shoot 2 extra shots. Also this weapon is Twin Linked so you can reroll your wound rolls. The Twin Storm Bolter is a little bit longer range than the Frackstorm Grenade Launcher. It has two attacks, hitting on a 3 plus with the strength of 4, 0 points of armor penetration and damage 1. Usually, if you are closer to your enemy, the Twin Storm Bolter will be probably a little bit better, but if you are against big holes, then the Twin Frackstorm Grenade Launcher will be a little bit better. But there is no significant difference. Pick the one that you like the most. Ok, and two weapons left. These weapons are on the other hand of the Dreadnought, on the Fist. You can choose between the Heavy Flamer and the Onslaught Gatling Cannon. Let's check on the Heavy Flamer first. This weapon, this weapon is ignoring the cover, so your target doesn't receive the benefit of cover. And this weapon is Torrent, so you don't have to make heat rolls, this weapon is automatically hitting the target. However, the Heavy Flamer has only the range of 12, so this one is a shorter range weapon. It has D6 attacks, so between 1 and 6, a little bit swingy. The strength characteristic of the Heavy Flamer is 5. It has 1 points of armor penetration and damage 1. Your other option, Onslaught Gatling Cannon. This weapon is a smaller version of the Gatling Cannon that we talked about earlier. It also has the ability of devastating wounds. The weapon's range is 24. It has 8 shots. Hitting on a 3 plus with the strength of 5, 0 points of armor penetration and damage 1. This has better range, more shots, but you have to hit your target and you don't have armor penetration. Both of them are good, but I prefer the Onslaught Gatling Cannon because of its range. Ok, we went through all of the shooting weapons of this model. And yeah, it was a lot. But now let's check on its melee weapon. Thanks to the Emperor, it only has one. But that one is great. Redemptor Fist. This weapon has 5 attacks. Hitting on a 3 plus, with the strength of 12, 2 points of armor penetration and damage 3. Ok. It has really great strength, ok armor penetration and nice damage. This weapon is good and you don't have to think about if you want to bring this one or another one. Let's check on the abilities of the Dreadnought. Duty Eternal. Each time when this model takes damage, it takes one less, but not less than one. So it's a nice boost on the survivability, except against many small attacks. Quick note, the part when you can take less than one damage is added in the later commentary. That's why you can't find it on the datasheet, but you can find it at the downloads page of Games Workshop. Other than this, it has an ability Deadly Demise. When this model dies, you roll a d6, and on a 6, this model blows up and deals d3 mortal wounds, anything and everything around it. So make sure if this one is blows up, when it's better be not in your lines. One last thing, this model becomes damaged when it has 1, 2, 3 or 4 wounds remaining. So very few. In this case, you have to subtract one from the hit rolls that these models make. So yeah, he is hitting a little bit worse, if he is seriously injured. But that's it about them. All in all, what is my opinion about this box set? This box set is great, everything that is inside of this kit is a thing that you want and a thing that you need. I think every model in this kit is a really great addition to any army, even if you are planning to play competitively. Maybe the primary chaplain is debatable, but I think he is also great. In this setup probably he is not the best hero to have, but if you get a squad of assault intercessors or blade guard veterans, then the primary chaplain can be a beast, even just with his buffing. I think as far as space marines goes, this is one of the best, if not the best, combat patrol box set that you can start your army with. So I would highly recommend this box set. Thank you for watching and listening. If you like what I do, please consider liking the video, or subscribing, or both, or even hit the little bell. If you don't hit the little bell, well I will probably upload a video on each week. I hope I see you in the next one. Bye.